Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will talk with you, take you for a little walk and share my updates. First, I have to address this background. I have to sit exactly like this because otherwise you will see this painting and it obviously is not in the right place. Apparently, the owner of this apartment was covering some scratch. I'm sorry. Let's begin. Actually, these days I was not in the mood to film. The reason is that I cannot share with you my true opinion. And many of you guys were asking me in the comments like, Natasha, where are you? Are you fine? So I had to film at least something. And now I'll tell you how I'm spending my days. They are very routine. Sometimes I don't even remember what I have been doing for the whole previous week. But basically now I'm writing my thesis. And I feel so bad telling about this because exactly one year ago, when I was making diary kind of videos, I was telling you about the same thing. In May I was writing my thesis. What happened? I failed my graduation and I had to take the academic leave. So basically all this year I was in the leave and now I am graduating this year in June, hopefully. Instead of writing that thesis um, for the whole year, I began just recently, as usual. Yeah, actually I wanted to begin in February. I began, but then on the 24th of February the war started and my next month consisted of just scrolling the news until 4 a.m. and I finally started in March. And if you guys are worried about me that I pronounce this word war, it's fine, because apparently now it is okay to say it, because even Russian state-owned media are saying it on the TV. And it's so humiliating to even worry about this. But this is my reality. So, about the thesis. My topic is neologisms in... Ne neologisms? Neologisms in English and their translation to Russian on the material of media. March and April were really productive, so recently I sent one-third of my work, a theory part, to my scientific advisor and I was so glad when I got a message from her, from her like, good job, uh, keep going, I'm waiting for the practice part. And I was so glad because before we had some unpleasant conversation with her, but now I'm on the right track and I have two more weeks and this will be just weeks of grind. Yes, I am ready. I am so glad that I will finally graduate this year. And my major is linguistics, English and Chinese, translation from English and Chinese, even though I don't know Chinese at all. If you ask me why I was learning it, uh, because I could not change it. And the thing is that exactly one year ago I passed all my exams. That's why I don't have to go to classes. I'm basically just uh, doing my YouTube, working from home. And uh, the drawback of such a job is loneliness. I discussed it in my junior video, telling that I have been living like this for two years already, so now it's not a big of a problem for me. I will leave Russia soon and... And it's important to talk about today's holiday. Today is the 9th of May, the day of victory in Russia. Russia and other post-Soviet countries. Because it is a day when the Soviet Union, all the republics of the Soviet Union and the Allies won the war with the Nazi Germany. It is a very important holiday in Russia. And um, every year in every Russian city there are parades and concerts and people are walking and it is a day off. And today I went to walk in the city. Don't worry, I will not show you anything triggering because I skipped the parade part. So now I want to take you for this walk. It's a really nice one. Let's go. The weather is so nice. Birds are tweeting. Green leaves are blossoming. I 
I found just thrown out books. This one is Danivasto, the Far East. these glasses because because I can I walked closer to the city center there's this big poster about this celebration and many people walking because uh, it is a day off today so I came to the city center to see something cringe-worthy but I don't see anything besides this the place where the, the concert was today there was a parade with people and tanks people are just walking helplessly I wanted to say carelessly and helplessly and I wonder how many people actually know what is happening I see a boy dressed in uh, a military military uniform this is how many parents like to dress their children to celebrate this holiday what is this And before I went out to the city today, I was wondering were they going to use this Z letter as their symbolics? Because this is what they did on the 1st of May. So on the 1st of May, we had a holiday called Day of Labor. And the slogan for this is Mir Trud Mai, which means Peace, Labor, May. But this year they changed it and it was Za Mir Trud Mai for Peace labor and may like we are fighting for it and uh, it was so bizarre to see how they changed the initial idea of this holiday and i thought they would do the same but i didn't see any symbols with the z letter today and it's such a sunny day so many people walking and it is so strange to think about this holiday seeing what is happening today but let's see how the Victory Day was passed in other cities. In Moscow, there was a parade on the Red Square. Putin gave a big speech, which I could not watch. And although I did not see Z or V letters in Khabarovsk, in many cities there were people with these symbolics. A man with a V-shaped St. George ribbon attacked a musician who refused to play military songs. The attacker constantly shouted, Are you an American? <laughs> In another city, there was an action where children shot the last fascist. An effigy of a fascist and an occupier was hung on the gate, whom the children shot from the air rifle. The mayor of the city commented on this as We raise our children as patriots and defenders of the fatherland. As a tradition, the commemorative event Immortal Regiment took place, where people carry portraits of their relatives who died in the Second World War. But some people used this as an opportunity to express their position and came out with pictures of their relatives saying they fought for peace. For this peaceful statement, these people were detained. But yeah, after that walk, I felt a little bit better. I really enjoyed seeing the sun, just uh, going to the stores, buying the glasses. And I'm so glad that even some basic things can make me happy. But still, thinking about what I have been feeling all these months. Hatred. I hate many things around me. When I return to Spask, every time, not anymore though, but I used to hate this place. I want a big asteroid to destroy all my memories in this city. 
you know it's when maybe many people who had not a pleasant childhood can relate to this the problems and struggles of today make me think that this is happening because I suffered in my childhood. I'm such a weak person, I can, I'm not decisive because in my childhood this is what I'm telling to myself. I know it's a really bad attitude. I should not blame myself for being weak in the first place. And again, what is weakness at all? Yeah, so if I have some struggle now, it doesn't mean that I am bad, it just, it just the, I don't know, the situation, just life. And what happened in the past is in the past and I should not let that childhood experience to define who I am now. And I feel that for all these years I was abused by my country. I cannot put it differently. I'm just, I, yeah, it's just a huge trauma in my soul. And the thing is that I have not lived in Spask for five years already. I moved to Khabarovsk when I entered the university. I have had so much different experience after that time. So why now I remember in Spask? Probably because when there, when there are stressful situations like this, your personality is returning to its default settings, basic settings, and I remember all that bad things. And another interesting thing is that I have a dilemma about suffering. So there's a saying that says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's why every time in my life when I didn't suffer enough, I was like, oh, this is bad for my self-development. This means that I'm in my comfort zone. So giving you an example, when I moved to Khabarovsk to study in the university, I lived in a student dorm, but I lived with my sister. So unlike other girls who lived with their roommates, I just lived with my sister, basically it felt like home, we did not have any arguments, any struggles, and I was like, yes, it is such a comfortable situation, but I miss out that valuable experience of uh, learning how to live with other people, and I blame myself for not taking that experience. But then I'm like, well, I took such experiences in other times of my life because I went to camps for many times and it's not a problem. Don't think that it is, don't take it so serious. So the question is, do these struggles make us stronger or on the contrary, are living a big trauma in our personality? I don't know. Probably this illustrates how the environment can affect you because I used to be not like this. Three years ago, I won a scholarship to study in the US for two semesters. It was my dream and when I studied there and traveled, I felt that I'm so capable. Wow, so many opportunities. I will be able to like to leave Russia. I will be able to be to live a good life in the future. But then I returned to Russia. 2020 hit and it was just worse and worse and now I'm in that very important time when I am finally going to leave Russia and a new chapter of my life begins. This is why it is so important to make this video now just to mark it on my channel and maybe in one year I will watch this and reflect on this. Hello Natasha in the future, are you alive? And together with these negative emotions, I have fear about my future. It seems to me that I'm not suitable for any profession. I don't see myself in any sphere. My major is linguistics, translation, but I don't want to be an interpreter. I don't want to be a diplomat. Maybe I should look in the direction of YouTube and what, study media. But I don't want to be a journalist. Like, I don't like to like I interview people or maybe I do like I just never tried it and this brings me to a very negative conclusion like oh I cannot do YouTube forever I will be poor when I move to the West because the prices there are higher but then I get a big motivation when I think what you want to stay in Russia 
to be put in jail for an anti-war picture. But I know that I'm scared so much just because of the environment and the usual doubts and worries that I always have. It's normal, I'm used to look at this, I'm working on this, and it's becoming better with every year. And I know that everything will be fine. I just have to graduate to write this freaking diploma and, and that's it. Finally, yes, I'm so happy. I know that I'm strong and that I will overcome all this, even though what does it mean to be strong or to be weak? There were many situations in my life when I behaved like strong and now looking back, I'm like, was it really me? I'm really capable of this? Wow. This means it's not that bad. I just forgot about this. I have to remind myself that I have to push myself to leave my comfort zone. Even though I don't like this phrase that, oh, you have to leave your comfort zone. Aren't you supposed to live your life in joy and comfort? I'm working to live in comfort. I just don't like this phrase, so I understand it differently. I want to live in my comfort zone and it doesn't interfere with my life plans. Just sometimes I have to um, step by step overcome these little fears and that's how I will be able to expand my comfort zone and it will be comfortable for me to do things that used to be scary for me. Wow, I came to this conclusion. I'm such a couch now. And overall, I am keeping my positive attitude I am stepping into the important moment of my life. I'm so excited about uh, going to the new country. As much as I'm worried about flights, rent, starting a bank account, lawyers, I know it will not happen just in one month because probably first time I will be nomading from country to country. But finally I will figure it out and I will be surrounded by people by the community that accepts me. I'll find friends, girlfriend, be in these healthy, happy relationships. I'll be engaged in some work, maybe I will volunteer somewhere. I'm so waiting for this moment and I know that it will happen. Yeah, and I realized that it's bad to live in the future. You have to appreciate what you have right now. And I do appreciate this, but why not to dream? This video is appearing to be more positive than I thought. I like this. I'm trying to think what I forgot to tell you about. Oh yeah, also I'm taking English classes now. I also go to the uh, English clubs here in Khabarovsk on Saturdays. I am writing my paper. I... That's it. One more thing that I would like to discuss is openness and vulnerability on my YouTube channel because I'm sharing with you my thoughts, my life with 300 unfamiliar people. Isn't it unnatural? At the same time, I'm completely comfortable because it's like therapy for me. When I speak all these problems out loud, I'm like structuring them and think that, well, it's not that hard, that not, it's not that bad. And it is helping me, so why not to do this? It's like a win-win situation. I do this because it is comfortable for me. You're watching this for whatever reason. Actually, why? <laughs> why you're watching this? And when I'm thinking about this, I'm like, people are not interested in this. But why they are watching that? Sometimes I am worried about oversharing, about how I present myself in my videos. Because once I saw a comment, Natasha is becoming an adult and is sharing her journey with us. Or that Natasha has grown into the young woman from being a teenager. Even though I never made videos on my channel as a teenager. I started it when I was 19, okay, but now I'm 22. Maybe it is okay? Because, in fact, these all descriptions are true about myself. I'm starting my new adult life and uh, I'm indeed growing and showing it on my YouTube channel. But maybe I just don't like showing myself as such a weak girl. And again, what is weak? I think I overused this word in this video. I should not talk about myself like this. I'm strong. On the other hand, 
I'm not responsible for how people in the internet see me. People are so different. Do you really think that I have the power to read the minds of every person and to influence the way they see me? I should not do this. I should just live my life and make 30 minutes long videos on YouTube. So yeah, guys, I hope that I will be free the next month. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for listening to me. So I hope that you are staying fine and healthy. I will see you very soon. Thank you so much once again. Have a good day and bye-bye. Пока-пока. Mm-hmm.